All right, and we are back now. The videos have been finished with Zane and Savage. So now we will be having our second semifinal here tea between has Zane been made. We're and ready. You have a strong cup of tea. A strong cup of tea. Look at this. It's like the size of my head, honestly. <laughs> the most giant cup of tea. And uh, yeah, we'll, it'll just be uh, Suskin and I for this one. This is it. This is going to be the long one. This is going to be the long yeah. one. So we're buckling up. Yeah. I got right? the tea ready. Like... Zane has said he's not going to attack. So they have they have a gentleman's agreement <laughs> not to attack because Savage was a little bit salty last time. I have warned Zane that I will go upstairs and have a go at him. If we if if we have like more than two games that are longer than like an hour, I will go upstairs and have a go at him. Yeah, I think I that's be, fair. One game, like... if one game you want to drag it out, okay. We have been pretty lucky so far in terms of the timing because my poor time management skills have been raised up from the ground by the fact that we've had only two O's and three <laughs> yeah. O's, and they've been quick as well. They've been like Kansas uh, Multi was like you know a ten minute series tops like. It was two very quick. It was like deals, boom, yeah. boom. So we have all this time waiting, which I don't know for the viewers. They, that must be a bit frustrating for them to be yeah. like, to be like, oh, we're waiting, we're waiting. All of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. There's a bunch of uh, two hours and three hours. <laughs> Did are we on the right screen? Uh, yeah, we should be. Because you know what it is? We've got the camera here. It always freaks me out. I feel yeah. like this is like what they're. Well, seeing. that's what that's there for, right? Yeah. So that we can still we can still frame it and stuff, but even when we don't see it. But we're not on. Yeah, in the game, we're not on anyway. Because you're a bit of a photographer hobbyist, aren't you? Really, I, you like I am. I am. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know my way around a camera. No, I, I know a little bit of photography. You know, just from the nature of the business that I'm in. Oh. But I need to know more about it. And I actually, I did it at A-Law. Actually, no, I know a bit about photography. I'm quite a photographer. You probably, actually, you probably yeah. know more than I do, to be honest. Nah, I mean, it's, you know, you're a hobbyist. Like, hobbyists tend to know a lot sort of thing, which is good. You can dive in. You actually like it. Yeah. All right. Should um, we do intros? I think we do. I think you get you get the first one. Do I get the first one? And in the bottom left-hand corner of 2000 Atmospheres, we have the one, the only, the savior of StarCraft. It is Grandad Savage. Fit in as many savage puns as you can. His <laughs> opponent, sometimes hailed as the United Kingdom slash Pakistan's best Protoss players. He is the ancient, the wise, Zane. The all-powerful Zane. You know, my favorite picture, uh, for those of you who don't know Zane, he, you know, he's not the tallest man in the world. And my favorite picture of Zane is the first epic land you went to when it's me, you, Countess Red Wolf, and Zane. And Zane's in the middle, and me and like we're on the side of him, and we're giant compared to him. But I, I sent him the picture, and I said, such a little man, but such big power. You know? <laughs> such big power. He is tall in spirit. Yeah, because he was like, like, he's better at the game than all of us. Do you know what I mean? So, like, by far as well. But, like, a good 2,000 of us. It's like, we might have the height, but Zane has the techers, you know? He has the skill. Yeah. Which is the, the bit you, you really want, you know? How's your big bro? I assume he's referring to Razor Blade. To Raza. To Raza, Raza. Yeah, to Raza. As everyone knows, Raza yeah. is the older brother of Zane. Yeah, 100% the older brother. He's actually sure. 10 years older than Zane. Yeah, Zane's only like 16. Zane's right, 16, 17. Young, up and coming Protoss player. And like Savage is uh, Savage is old, right? Savage is like 50 or something. Or oh, 60. <laughs> Zane yeah. says he's, his older brother is having a good time casting. So I. I Maybe he means me. Maybe am yeah. I Zane's older brother? I think you are. You I, are Protoss, yes. You, I, yeah. I am older than him, so by by a couple of years, I'm. Oh yeah, okay. I'm an older guy, so you know what? That, we can we can take it. I'll take it. Now, what's this little probe doing? I thought they had an agreement not to attack each other. So I think that might have been a little bit of bounce because at the end of the day, Zane knows that we don't have all the time in the world. I think. He's probably not going to cheese him, but he's also probably not going to turtle. I'm seeing the Stargate getting built. However, you know, from what I was talking to Zane about, you know, I don't know if, like, he's going to build an oracle out of that or anything. I think, you know, he's just going to go straight to, like, carriers or something and just turtle up on three bases. And I love that little bit of control from Zane there. Catching that Ling, even though he had already shaded If it were me, I'd be looking away. He saw the Ling, and then he juked it so that he actually got two hits off and killed it. So really nice. Those are the little things you notice, right? It's especially at this level, right? When they're this good, it's those little tiny things that make the difference in their skill level. And to see them and appreciate them is really nice. Yeah, like you, you need to be a certain level of skill to even notice these things a lot of the time because it might just look like, oh yeah, he's just he's just attacking, yeah, the, doing attacking a little, the zergling. Yeah. Like a gold league player might see that and be like, yeah, I don't get it. I do that too. You wanted to say diamond league I, player, but then you remembered I was diamond league. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't I don't throw uh, diamond slurs in my casting when I'm I'm casting. With Especially not when you're on the sofa with me, you know. 
The proud, the proudest diamond leaguer. So Sasuke, I'm basically a diamond leaguer, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be. No, you're not. Diamond you're like 4.2k Terran MMR. Like even your off races are like high MMR as well, you know. So your Zerg's um, like 4k. I'm basically a diamond player. Your Terran's like 4.2. I'm, I'm, I'm basically, I'm still at the MMR where, where MMR boundaries matter to me, whether I'm in Masters or not. I just miss when there was no boundaries and it was like one league fits all, you know. So like it was That's just very diamond. communist of you. We are all diamond we on this blessed diamond. day. But it just it made it so much more interesting because you'd play those ladder games and you'd play like a really hard ladder game and you'd win it and you'd be like, oh, I know he was top diamond. Do you know what I mean? You'd like convince yourself. Yeah, you know? you you just have you you wouldn't know, but you'd know. You'd know, yeah, and you'd be like, I bet he, I bet he's like two games off getting masters. Do you know what I mean? You'd say stuff like that to yourself to try and like pump you up. Whereas now you'd have like an unbelievably tough game against a diamond player. You check and you're like, oh my god, he's like two MMR off platinum, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, for me, it's like if I play against someone who's like 5k, I'm like, I don't care if I win or lose. I'm like, oh man, shit, that was a good game. But then if I play someone who's like, you know, high diamond, uh, like 4-2, let's say, and then it's like a really close game, I beat myself up over it, even if yeah, I win. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, it's it's yeah, those yeah, like yeah. things. The best thing is to just not think about it. Yeah, and I also I, it's it doesn't matter what MMR you can have a good game. Yeah, I think generally MMR to some degree is just like a meaningless number, if that makes sense. Like I think it, it comes a lot down to like style and like technique and stuff like that. And I think a great example of this is like so when me and Koala play, Koala's like three hundred MMR above me. But like the current like score between me and Koala is that like I'm up in the series. You know, yeah, whatever. like it's pretty close, but you're you're yeah. up overall. Like we play a lot of games, so it's hard to really tell what the thing is. Yeah, but if you ask Koala, he'd be like, "Oh, you beat me the last two times we played, or whatever." Shout out to Koala on stream. Yes, I did. <laughs> but then, like when I play Stazo, who's two other MMR but like below me, like I can't beat him for the life of me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like that MMR. It's just like it's a meaningless number to some degree. They say there's ladder players and there's tournament players, Suskin. You know what I mean? I wonder. What, I, I think I'm just a customs player. You know, that's where my skill lies at. You're just uh, you're a macro player, and oh, I'm like, oh. I think that's what it is. Is if you if, I think if people cheese you, maybe it's not so good. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's funny because Koala is very defensive in his style and Stazo is very aggressive. So against Koala, I get to be, I'm allowed to do what I want to do. Yeah. And whereas against Stazo, like, I have to do what he wants to do sort of thing, you know. What did I say, by the way? I told you we weren't going to see much coming out of that style port apart from carriers, you know. He's going to turtle on free bases and build carriers. The clock yeah. is ticking. If this, this game is... goes for more than half an hour, I'm going to go upstairs and have a go at Zane. Okay? And this is, this is how you want to do it, I think, right? Like, so Savage has gone straight for an infestation pit. He's gone for four bases. He's, yeah, both of them are going to be macroing pretty hard here. I mean, Zane's been putting, like, he's been scouting and things like that, but obviously, yeah, they're, I think he's staying true to his word. He's building a lot of static defenses here with no real reason to. There's not, like, a push coming out from Savage. Savage already at 70 workers, though. I mean, Zane's got to be careful. Zane's got to be careful. And also, I, like, he's building roaches, and he's getting plus one attack. Like, he might, he might be going for, like, the double bluff, where he's going to do, like, a big roach all in and try and, like, bust him down before we get to the super late game point. Because, you know, obviously he was talking a lot before the game about how, like, he wants to play this super, super long game. And he might have got into Zane's head a little bit, you know, thinking, like, oh, Zane's like, okay, we're going to play this really, like, safe, defensive style. Whereas Savage is like, ah, oh, now I've tripped you into thinking that. Now I'm going to do a roach wall in sort of thing, you know? Yeah, that, that could be rough. And also, this is kind of how you could lose to a player who's worse than you, maybe, right? If you're both just turtling, you're both just macroing, all of a sudden, oh, you have an army that's better than mine. Shoot. Yeah, but, like, fuck, like, what do I do? I'm just dead, right, you know? Dead in the war. Why are these two carriers coming across the map? Is there something I don't know? I mean, why not? What could what can contest these? If the, if like eight queens, queens can contest Yeah, it, but they yeah. can't chase them, right? So I think so you can poke with the, the carriers and be like, right, did you make eight queens? Oh you did, okay, I'm gonna go home. Like you, <laughs> like, you like like there's like there's, there's nothing there's nothing to worry about, right? Like they fly and queens are Queens does slow. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's like screw you guys, I'm going home. Yeah, fair enough. It's just one of those like okay, I just 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 you know, give you a little poke, just to let you know. I'm here just to let you know I'm building carriers, basically. Just to let you know I can. Yeah. <laughs> dominance. Assert dominance. Assert dominance. And now we're up to four Stargates. We're getting Void Ray speed? Is that what that is? I can't even check it, but I think... I think that's Void Ray speed. I think it's yeah. Void Ray speed. So are we going to see... Flux capacitors, I think. We, it's cool. we get the carriers to stay alive. Then we make 20 Void Rays, and we just go around sniping bases. This is looking to be, I got to tell you, a bit of a meme. A bit of a meme? A bit of a meme. I think this is a bit of a meme. You don't see this. I think I need to message uh, Alexandra to get confirmation of if this is a game or not, you know? Alex is the, the is this certified a game? ruler. Is it not a game? On, like, is it a game, you know? And I feel like I need Alex right now to tell me if this is a game. Because I'm not sure if it is yet. I don't know if Savage or Zane will be victorious, but the real winner are the viewers. 
what to sit here for half an hour. You know what, Suskin? We're gonna look at the positives. They're gonna yes. see something that they've never seen before. They're gonna see something amazing. Is what they're gonna see. They're gonna see Macra at its finest. Okay. And people. Th wow, and Adept's got three kills. Really? Wow. Yeah, I got that, one kill. That little cheeky, that little cheeky run by there. A lot of roaches being made. Actually, this is interesting. So you thought it was gonna be super hardcore turtle. A lot of roaches being made for Savage and infestors. So we've got, we could potentially do like a neural parasite. Neural parasite. Has he researched neural? Can we check? I mean. If he's researched neural? He has not. Unless I'm missing something. He's got roach speed. He he's got you. overlord speed, I think. He's got, he's got link, link speed. speed. He's just got all speeds. That's all he gets and then plus one. He's just a quick boy. He's just fast as fuck, boy. He's like, he's like, he just wants to like float like a butterfly. Sting like a bee. Sting like a bee. Float for, I don't know why he's built this ungodly amount of roaches. I mean, fair enough, he has a lot of queens, but I feel like this is not the army you want against like mass air. It is the unit that can't shoot up. So it's the old queen walk with infestors to support, attacking a fourth base at 10 minutes with Roach Ravager. I mean, there, there's a lot of units here. Uh, are they good units against what Zane has? I don't know. But this fourth base is probably gonna die. Like, maybe a fungal might be able to catch the... Yeah, I mean, the Void Race could get caught in a fungal. Uh, oh my but God, it's yeah, not it's happening. sniped so quickly as well. Oh, the, uh, microbone. He's actually used the microbial shroud to get this down. But Zane has actually so much here. Ooh, nice files there. Managed to pick up like one or two Void Rays. But yeah, I don't really know how this is looking. I feel like Zane is in a super strong position because he's going to be able to kill the Roach army. Yeah. But the Queens are going to keep poking. As long as Zane keeps this army alive, right? Like, it's it's definitely uh, looks bad losing fourth. Uh, but ultimately, it's Roach Ravager Queen. I'll tell you something as well, though, which is all the carriers have run out of interceptors, which means that there's not that much firepower on the army left. Now. You've got the Void Raid that can do a lot of damage to the uh, Roaches, but the Queen can generally kill Void Raid, right? Especially with uh, Transfuse and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a lot of static defense here, though, and Zerg is getting bunched up in this choke. So you can see the stuff at the back doesn't really get to fire other than maybe Vials. And this is on a clock. I think if Zane holds this without losing too many units, he's going to be pretty happy. If this third base goes down, I'm scared. I'll, I'll tell you that. And I think it might be going down. It's looking pretty scary. As soon as the interceptors are back, though, this has to be good for him. There's so many microbial shards and so much clean energy left. I really like this from Savage. This is a really cute attack. Yeah, really cute, right? And it's like, I like the way he spread, like, you see where he spread the creep on the map? Like, he really spread it towards that third base. Like, you knew he was going to do this. Yeah, this is very dedicated. Sure. But now there's enough void rays to just completely overwhelm this. This base is going to go down, though. And this is going to mean that Zane is a two base Protoss against a four base Zerg. But he's mass air as well. He needs a lot of economy to support the star. And Zane's army, though, he's got the fast void rays. And he hasn't really lost any air units. So the thing about Savage is he's gonna need to hold this push now. This yeah. counter push. It's it's gonna be basically a two base sky toss all in. Uh, that he's been forced into. It's not really Zane's fault. But now Zane is like, right, my turn. One thing I want to mention is that whilst that like long drawn out fight was going on, I thought Zane was doing a really good job of like focusing fire in Queens and like trying to whittle down the Queen number. Which I would, like really, I think, helped him out in the long run there because if he had, had if the queen number had stayed really high, you know, he would have lost more air units, right? And his counter attack now wouldn't have been as strong. But the fact that he was able to smoke the queen, he didn't like lose that much stuff. And you're right, like here it comes down to really massive, scary uh, golden armada, where Savage doesn't really have much to hold it off with. Yeah, and Zane can just snipe these bases. He can go, he can go literally snipe all three yeah. bases and then recall to hold his map. Yeah. And then what are you going to do with your Zerg? You have nothing left. There's no path to an army for Savage that beats this, that I can see. Uh, he's making Corruptors, but there's so many Void Rays. Couple of Fungals coming down, which is really helpful, but these Corruptors just, oh, he's, he is gonna recall half of them. So Zane must be confident that he can still fight this here while defending at home with the Void Rays. So it's gonna take a little bit of multitasking, but... I think that was a bit of a blunder by Zane, really, because I think the Corruptors are gonna kill most of this air army. Um, and he doesn't have like a major economy to rebuild it. Okay, no, maybe yeah, maybe you're right. Zane knew what he was doing. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, defends and attacks at defends the same time. 
Wow, what a what a weird game. And it didn't take that long, actually. It was 13 minutes, but, you know, at the end of the day... I knew it. I knew I knew Savage was playing the mind games there and was going for the rope drawling. I, I, I've met Savage. Like, I've hung out with Savage. I know how he thinks. I know how he acts. Do you know what I mean? I know. He, I knew it was a mind game, you know? I knew he was just going to... He was going to try and get Zayn to build, like, carriers and turtles. And he was going to try it all in him. I just knew it. I know, I, like, I, I know Savage. I've you knew it in your bones. Yeah, I could feel it in my body, like... I just knew. I have to say from Savage, I really like that build. Even though it didn't win, it would have killed most Protoss. I and, think it would have killed most Protoss, yeah. And it was something I've never seen before. I've never seen an Infestor Roach Ravager. It's almost like the Lurker build. Yeah. Right? The Lurker uh, the Lurker Queen sort of push. But instead of Lurkers, you've got Infestors with the Microbial Shroud to protect the Queens from the Carriers. And it, it wasn't too bad. It could have been a lot worse. I think that was a good map to do it on as well. Because like I was talking to Zane about earlier where um, that's like a really good map, I feel like, to push the third and fourth bases when they expand in a line like that. Because you get control of the tower. But also, the way he, like, if you saw the way he spread the creep, it's quite easy to get from, like, your fourth base to their third base, if you know what I mean. Like, if you take that fourth base in the pocket, um, and, like, I was just a really, like, good decision-making, I think. If you were going to do that build, like, that was the map to do yeah, it. Yeah, you get you know it, I mean? the shortest po possible yeah. path to like, your opponent. Especially if you're going to do, like, a queen walk as well. You need a really like streamlined path, right, to get the queens across. Otherwise, it takes forever. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that was like because it's quite a small map, two thousand atmospheres. I find actually, it's not that big. All right, so Zane is now. Whoop! Is he in the game already? Oh, he's just in a custom game. Is Savage in the game as well? No, he's not. Okay, so Zane's just ironing something out. I think. Yeah, like what are you doing? In terms Zane? of technical difficulties, he's <laughs> shadow boxing. Right? He's like, he's like, yeah, okay, tata, okay. Tata. we got one, we got one. Got to go for the second. But he just won. Like, normally you do that after you don't win, right? <laughs> you, yeah, you would think. You would think. Uh, looks like Raza 2-0 over Countess. And Rest in peace, Countess. Chelch. Okay, so it's the loser of this will go on and play Chelch. So we, we have a little bit of wait to do. So we could see a Savage Chelch match, you know? We could. That would be quite good. I think, that would be quite good. Yeah, yeah, we already saw Molten Savage, and Savage is showing his ZVP. It's quite strange. If you're bringing Zane down to the wire... Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. And I know Zane is, you know, sort of giving him a bit of wiggle room. I yeah. Think. I think if Zane was going full board, that wouldn't have looked like that. But he let he sort of Zane was like, right, give me your best shot. I yeah, will, show abs you I will absorb it, you know, and then I will turn it back. <laughs> and now I will show you how I get down, which is God knows how many void rays. I just think void rays are so scary, you know, when they get into such a high number like that. They do so much damage, right? Yeah, especially if, you're, if you make a bunch of roaches and then the void rays. Once the queens are dead, and then the the void rays start focusing the roaches because yeah. they like the void rays. Like it seems like they do nothing because they keep attacking the queens. They're like, bzzz, you know, they just sit yeah. there attacking the queens, and then, and then the, then noobs, they're the noobs will like overcharge them against queens, and it's like, what are you doing, man? They're not armored. No, 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 no. no. The overcharge is it's again it's a domination. It's thing, a dominance, you know? it's like, right? When the beam is bigger, you know, it's more powerful, right? That makes sense. But yeah, then. All of a sudden, they start attacking the roaches, and the roaches are like, zip, 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 zip. They just, yeah, they just they just vaporize in it. Yeah, they just disappear. <laughs> like it's actually quite scary. All right, let's get into the game here. Game number two between Savage and Zane. I do appreciate that they're just going into the game without even asking me if they're ready. I, it, it, that a lot of people probably would find that annoying. I love it. I don't want to hold anything up. No, I, yeah. I can't pay attention. Yeah, I agree. You know especially, what I mean? especially just, like people underestimate like you're trying to cast, you're trying to observe you're trying to do all the string production stuff it's like you don't really have time to set up the games and do stuff like that if if i claim to be a professional uh tournament organizer i would probably take all that personally i'd be like oh man i need to be perfect but you know what i'm just a guy man i'm just a guy who loves starcraft we're just sitting chilling on a sofa on a saturday watching some starcraft drinking a cup of tea life couldn't get much better really, i mean i haven't right seen now. my friends in so long. i mean i've seen you and i've seen you recently but i have but Apart from that, we haven't really got to play StarCraft. He anything, told me a we? funny story about how you two crossed paths. Mm -hmm. And how he figured out like you got like neighbors now or something, right? So he yeah, lives yeah. he lives like a five minute walk. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And apparently he was like walking home one day and some dude was like No, it was better. I was walking to the kebab van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were They thought me and me and my partner were going out for a walk, like a nice walk around the countryside, and we were like, no, we're getting a kebab. <laughs> we're getting kebabs, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, and what was I doing, Suskin? You were uh, apparently skateboarding. I was skateboarding. Yeah, you were skateboarding. I, yeah. I am, yeah, so I'm pretty self-conscious. Like, I don't want 
my I don't want people to see me with all my pads <laughs> on with my skateboard going around as a 30 year old man <laughs> and yet here we are so i'm like you know what it's fine and apparently he said to me he was like i was walking down the street and someone shouted out my name and i looked and i saw this man skateboarding and i went who the hell is this right like am i about to get shanked <laughs> yeah like what's going on like, by what a 14 year old yeah. yeah like who's this guy on a skateboard like coming towards me screaming my name you know and he's like oh no it's dane like okay thank god yeah. and then apparently it turned out you two are neighbors I was really... That was such a pleasant surprise. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. Bradley lives near me. Like, you could have moved anywhere around Cambridge. Lived right beside me. Moved, yeah, within 10 minute walk. Of you. It's crazy. So are we walk. in Cambridge? Or is this like... Uh, yeah, yeah. technically. Like, if you ask our postal address, <laughs> yes. Because yeah. I feel like we're not like in the city of Cambridge, are we, really? No, you know you'd have I mean? to drive a half an hour to get into Cambridge Centre. Yeah, well, right? yeah. So you're, we're in a village that's around Cambridge. We're in the greater Cambridge, we're in Cambridge area. Here. Yeah, we're in... The greater we're in like the suburbs of Cambridge. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're in a suburb. Yeah, that's, like, that's reasonable. If this, if this was London, we'd be in Cockfosters. You know, which is like... <laughs> the, the final one. stop. Yeah, the, the final stop at the beginning. Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Do, you, do you know um, Winston? Did you ever meet Winston Lee? I don't know. The only thing I know about Scott Winston Lee. is... Chill, Winston! But that's about <laughs> it, you know? So so we, we apart from another Imperial Starcraft Society alumni... Uh, Winston. The prestigious. He, he one day, I used to live with him and in, in, in uni, and he one day was like, I just really want to go to the end. Of, oh, I the... want to go to Cockfosters. So he just rode the train all the way to Cockfosters. Bought, oh, like, I think he... I think he bought a bow. Why does that sound he so dirty? He bought a bow and bow. arrow from like a department store in Cockfosters and then came back again. So the funny thing is I grew up in Cockfosters. Really? Yeah, that's my neighborhood kind of thing. And I'm just trying to think like, where is a bloody bow and arrow shop? Do you know okay, what I mean? Maybe, maybe he had the bow and arrow somewhere else, but he literally just one day went and rode the train all the way to Cockfosters it's and funny. came I, back again. I wish I knew With him a bow and arrow. <laughs> I wish I knew him at the time because I could have told him like, go to Cockfosters, get off and go to Miracle's Cafe. Oh, yeah. and get a milkshake and nice. that's like that's actually like worth going worth to the end of the you know what i mean going yeah. to like the very end of the tube is like that's why you, that's like the only reason i go back to cockfosters now is to get this milkshake from the this cat sounds like i know it's like morden that's is that near the end of the northern line oh more no morden's like in the city isn't it I, no no you're right morden i'm thinking of morgate yeah, which yeah, is in Mor the city morden's yeah. like, in, like the south end of the northern line yeah which makes like, that's a really weird sentence to say isn't it it's the, the south, south end, end of the, the northern, northern line. line yeah it's the like northern line is poorly named i'm gonna be honest yeah. from south, north to south you know but it's i get that i mean like i've always wanted to do like piccadilly to uxbridge mm. which is like one side to the other and apparently it takes like two and a half hours or something like that you know i've been on the tube for like up to an hour and that even that's a bit much right? yeah you get a bit claustrophobic after a while, I find. It's you know a lot, I mean? it's especially on a warm day. Oh, God, it's horrible. You really sweat. It gets really hot down there. It's like, talk about needing a sauna. No, you don't need one at all. So maybe we should, we should talk about Starcraft. I don't know. Nah. Have we missed anything? No. Nah. This is, this is new, actually. I like this. So instead of doing the pylon between the Nexus, you do the, the uh, adept between there. That actually creates a nice little wall. And it's not going to screw your probes up as much when they go to build stuff. This is nice. That's the little things that I noticed. Yeah, that's, that's what yeah, I'm going to take away from this. That's what we were talking about before. Those little tiny adjustments that those high-level players make. What is Savage's MMR? Do we know? It's like 5.8, isn't I it? I thought it was like 5k. I don't know, actually. Off the top of You're right. He could be fine. I know that him and like Chelch are very similar level. But I also know that Savage like routinely finishes in like the top five at Epic Land. Right? Yeah, I, I honestly, I thought he was 5k, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me. He, uh, uh, from his games today, I would guess anywhere from 5k to like 5.8. Point I'm, like, I'm yeah. pretty sure that every Epic Land that I've been to, he's finished in the top five. And like, you get some really strong players at Epic Land. Yeah, I'm so. really glad we got him for the tournament, to be honest. Like, Is Zane attacking this game? I mean, he's buzzing down a couple of drones just to show that he can. That's attacking, me. attacking. It's it's a, it's a harassment. You know? Yeah, I'll go give him a slap on the wrist. He's 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 allowed. I think this is this is in the contract between him and Savage. He's allowed to use attacking units in a somewhat aggressive manner. Yeah, and I mean an orc requires a little bit of micro and control, doesn't it? So again, it's kind of like worth it, I guess. Oh, is he gonna lose this? That's Ooh. really close. That's about as close as you get. That's a six HP oracle without it? losing it. Yeah, how much do queens do? More than six, right? I can't I see. Like yeah, that's something that I should know. Should just read a book. No, nah, readings for nerds. You heard it here. Okay, readings for nerds. I'm telling you this now. 
Who needs to read? Same with build orders, right? Build orders are for nerds. Just build units and attack. You don't need a strategy. Spoken like a true diamond. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm in diamond, folks. Okay. That's all, folks. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We might get done for copyright. My bad. <laughs> Immediately taken down. Yeah, just instantly. Oh, the carriers again from Zane. It's weird seeing the carriers with interceptors, though. I mean, that's they're better with interceptors than without, generally. They do nine damage. Nine damage. So yeah, he was, he was dead. He was dead in a half with one more shot from the queen. I think... Uh, they should think, do half that, for sure. I think, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think Savage is trying to do like the same thing he did last game. The only thing I don't like about it in this game is that Jaganapha is a really long map. And like trying to do a queen warp on this map, I feel like it's such a big commitment and it's going to take forever to do it. And this is a very different attack from him as well because we don't see an infestation pit, a fourth base, a high drone count. Yeah. We just see 57 workers. I mean, yeah, it's a decent amount of workers, but it's it's a bit faster and it's going to be um, met with a different composition, right? Well, I think it's a good adjustment from Savage, right? I think he realized, okay, last game my attack, like, it hit too late. Like, he had enough to hold it. He had enough void rays, he had enough carriers. He's like, let me cut the infestors, cut drones earlier, and attack sooner. And maybe this way I can get some more damage done. He's going to have less screens for sure, but also he's going to have less army. And here we see now the carriers doing some damage to the roaches. It's again a bit of a, like, awkward position here for the queens. They're trying to kill the interceptors. Yeah, Zane is kind of coming and hawing over what he wants to attack here. I think he's just attacking whatever overextends. Is in his main, yeah, oh, that's that going to be a little crazy. annoying. Uh, although there are rallied units from the Stargate, though, it's and just a warp in. Yeah, so the, the rallied units from the Void Ray, from the, yeah, the Void Ray is will clean up. And I think Zane wa is going to want to focus fire these queens. This one's a little bit overextended, and it's got a decent amount of energy, so that's a big pickoff. I think this is only a matter of time to be honest it's basically just queens at this point i think he's done it i think so because he's killed all the interceptors right so now he has free roam if only he had a little bit more roaches to put his army yeah just as i say that more roaches show up yeah because <laughs> he's at least now he can start doing some building damage but there's more quite nice. there's more void rays and stuff coming from the top 10 there's... probes just died don't know how don't know where there's they were they would have been in the main i guess right up here yeah, yeah. yeah. cleaned up the ones in the main He's re rebuilding his interceptor. He's got a couple void rays left over. The queen count is really the crucial thing because you can't reinforce the queens. Yeah. A couple of slow zealots coming in to engage us, and now Zane's nearly finding the angle that he needs on these queens. And no bases have gone down yet. And the, you know, the queens are the only anti-air you have with this army. So for every queen you lose... Oh! oh damn! For every queen you lose, you lose your anti-air capabilities. It's like, it's like Zane knew what I was going to say, you know, he timed it to perfection, you know, with that disruptor. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, you'd hate to see it happen, unless, unless you're Protoss and then you'd love to see it happen. Two disruptors joining the fight now, and this, this base is taking some damage, but I think Zane is going to be able to overcharge this battery and actually keep this alive, so nice control so far. Savage has done a good job of killing these workers there. I mean, it's, yeah, Zane's down to 41 workers when he was on like 60 a minute ago, 60, 60 a minute ago. So he might have like a little bit of hope here to try and like come back into this game because he's going to have like some economy advantage. He is floating a lot of minerals, so he does need to spend his money. He doesn't have a lot of gas either, not a high gas income. The issue that Savage has is after doing a kamikaze attack like this, he'll kill, let's see, how many workers? He killed 30 workers. So you're thinking, wow, that's so good for Savage. He killed 30 workers. Mm -hmm. But... There's a crucial technological difference here in that everything that Zane has is part of the Protoss Armada that shoots up and down, or it flies and it shoots down. There are four queens left for anti-air. Five queens. Six queens, sure. And some hydras. But at the end of the day, Zane's army all flies. And I think that's a pretty good thing. And there's a lot of firepower in this army. Like he's got that critical mass of void rays again. Like GG is called Zane taking the game 2 oh, I'm happy. So Nothing far, the series has been a total of 23 minutes, you know? And that, I thought we were going to be here for an hour and a half. I, I thought we'd still be in game one. Yeah, I thought we'd still be... <laughs> like, I could hear you were, like, faffing about in the kitchen because you were like, oh, it's going to be forever. Yeah, like, I I, I'm surprised I missed it. Yeah. The whole thing. I was like, oh, I could get a snack, have yeah, a sandwich. Yeah, you were, like, taking your time. You were like, I'm not going to miss anything. It's going to be, like, turtling for 20 minutes or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Quite shocking, for sure. And here we are, game Prez. Not long now. It's coming. Oh, look. 
Who's that? Who's this gorgeous man on camera with blonde hair? Wow. Oh. Is it Marlon Brando? <laughs> <laughs> you, don't you start that. Okay, don't you start that, mister. I, but now that he's said it, I can't not see it. Yeah, so I actually, I do think I do look quite like him. He said to me, if you didn't wear your glasses, you'd actually get away with it, I think. You'd be a good, like, impersonator. Yeah, yeah, a good representation of it. Um, it's probably the nicest thing I think someone's ever said to me about my looks. Is that like, oh, you really look like Marlon Brando. I thought you were going to be like, oh, don't start now. Like, oh, my life's so hard. I'm being f- compared physically to a famously handsome yeah, man. Like, like, yeah, oh, like, yeah oh. like this famously like, ch- like beautiful actor kind of thing. You know? Yeah, no. I get, you know who I get compared to? Red Day. The famous man. The legend. That too. I also get compared to uh, Q from the new James Bond. Oh, that yeah, nerd, yeah. that skinny, tall nerd you know with the glasses. What? I could kind of see Tony Hawk. Maybe. You could do it. Sure. Tony I could, right. You see what I mean? Like, you could kind of yeah, see yeah. Tony Hawk. Because they're both... Tony... <coughs> oh, God, I'm dying. Um, like, you're both quite like tall. And like Tony Hawk's really skinny, and so are you. Well, I'll take it. Could be worse. I definitely don't skate like Tony Hawk. I skate you like... You don't shred the knots? I s- <laughs> skate like... Four year old, you know, I read Tony Hawk's biography actually called The 900. Um, really good book, I have to recommend it. I, love that. I, just, I'm just, en- I just really... enjoy his tweets about people not realizing that he's Tony Hawk, yeah, or like watching the videos of him, right? Where he shows up to like skate parks and he's yeah. like skating, and people are like, oh, I love skate, and they're like talking to him so nonchalantly. And well, he asked, like, ask what his name is, and they, you know, he says Tony, and they go, Oh, like Tony Hawk, yeah, 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 or like. He'll go to a skate park and he'll be like, do you guys know Tony Hawk? And they're like, yeah, I love Tony Hawk. And then he's like, it's, and they have no idea it's him, right? I think, yeah, because he's his like, yeah, yeah. You know, I could kind of see it. Yeah, I could kind of see it, right? You know, I could kind of see yeah, it. Yeah, you could pull off a mean Yeah, I think you could do a bit of a Tony Hawk. Right. thing is, like, he's obviously like 50 now or something like he's that. He's a lot older yeah. than that now. He's looking rough these days. I need like a young Tony Hawk. Is Everyone thinks he's, he looks like he's 16 years old because he's still skating. He landed a 900 like a few years ago. Like he's, last one, he can like, still do it. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Well, that was his big trick, though, wasn't it? That's what put him on the map was the 900. Yeah. He did the 900. I can't remember when he did it. I think it was like 96 or 92, I want to remember, in like the X Games. Yeah. He did the And then like the year before or something like that, he failed it. And like he tore his like shoulder or something like that. Kind of thing. It's a really good book. It's um, really like inspiring, actually. The Tony yeah. Hawk. Book. Yeah, like I read, I read about Tony Hawk and I'm like, wow, he really overcame all his physical struggles to land that 900. Yeah. I, I can probably get do out a kick of, get out of bed and have you seen that video get out of bed and do a kickflip today. Jump between two like uh, office buildings, like ten story buildings. Yeah, yeah, jump, yeah, yeah, jump yeah, 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 yeah. I have seen that actually. Yeah, it's such a weird video to watch as well now, because like, you imagine the health and safety now. Oh, you'd never get away with that. Yeah, you'd never get away with that. Yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. Your um your kickflip on your YouTube channel is quite good. Oh, you've seen that? Yeah, I watched that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watched that. Yeah, your kick was quite good. <laughs> I got a fan. Oh my god! Someone see my skating. Oh my god! Oh my god. I actually uh, brought my. So the year thirteens just left. Uh, yeah. As viewers may know, I'm a, a secondary school teacher, and I actually uh, played a game of skate with one of my year thirteens on the last day, on our last That's... lesson, because they found like uh, I had tried a kickflip in class one day when they were working. Because he brought a skateboard in, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, hey, fellow kids, how you doing? <laughs> uh, you know, get, get cool with the kids. I show them a kickflip. And I didn't I didn't land it, but I was wearing my, like, Oxford. So I was like, all right, yeah. I'm going br- to bring my skate shoes in. We're going to play a game of skate. He kicked my ass, obviously, because I actually don't. Is skate competitive? You can play a game of skate, which is like horse. Yeah. So oh, fine. So like he horse. does a trick, you do yeah, a trick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so I, got, I managed to get him a letter. Okay, uh, yeah, fine. So, you know, I was on the board, but, uh, you know. All, it was it was a weird thing. I, How I have hard to, is it to skate in like Oxford's? It's in not like easy. Brogues. It's not easy because you are tearing them up and ruining them. Yeah, that's the main thing. Because they're nice leather shoes for a start, aren't and they're not they? flat on the bottom, so you can't really get in a comfortable. Yeah, position. they're like arched, and also there's not really like a lot of grip on them, right? Because they're flat, like solid, aren't they? They're the like grip's leather. not so much of a problem because you got the grip tape, right? So it's not it's not the biggest deal in the world. But it's the fact that they're not flat. So when you, you put your shoe, yeah. you can't get your feet at the angle. Because to do a kickflip as well, you have to like push and don't you, and like flip with the board. Like I don't know how to do it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you gotta you gotta pop it. And, eh, yeah, it's, it's which, like you need the flat foot of this, don't you? Honestly, it's the me not landing the kickflip had more to do with me not landing a kickflip than, than the shoes. Let's <laughs> be yeah. real here. No, we blame the tools, you know. Yeah. We're bad craftsmen. Is what we are. 
I love this little band. Things has got a lot of spare APM, as far as I can tell. Yeah, and sort of savage. Like they're both just sort of having a bit of bands. They've been doing it this whole series, and I love it. I love the yeah. band that they're having. Good know? respect. Yeah. This is the kind of thing you can have in an invitational with an autocrat who has supreme executive power. <laughs> because I can, I can allow this, and then if someone says something I don't like, I can be like, "Well, no, you're banned, though." And they're like, "Why? Why is it in the rules?" And I'd be like. No rules here, bitch. <laughs> I am the rules. Welcome, I am the Senate. You know? Welcome to Stalingrad. <laughs> no, welcome to Danegrad. <laughs> <laughs> Danengrad. Danengrad, yeah. I mean, we're seeing it pretty much the exact same as the last game here now, except that I don't think I've seen the Roach Warren go down for a Savage, so he's probably not going to be like, trying to do some like Roach timing attack again. Killing these, killing these overlords is a real pain. That yeah. really slows down the Zerg player. Yeah, you don't... Losing one is okay. I think losing two, it hurts. And then more than that, and it's just like, a man. I think he lost more than two. Yeah, I think he's lost about three overlords or something. Yeah, that, like that. That, that really hurts in, at the end of the day. Like, Well, it just slows you down so much. Right? And look, look, look at the supply advantage Zane now has. Which, like, as a Zerg player, you should never be, right? You never should be behind supply as a Zerg player. Yeah, especially I mean, when you're in like these early macro stages of the game. We're on 41 workers. I mean, as these finish, he'll go up to 50. He's got Hydralis then down already. We don't see the early Evo chamber. Oh, no, we do. Okay, but he's gone for melee instead of uh, attack. And he's going for like six guesses with a fourth. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know much about Zerg. So when I try and analyze their builds, I'm sort of like, oh, no. what is all this about? This is it. This is the game. Oh no, I can feel it already. What, were they not going to attack each this other? This is going to be the game. Well, we're going to be here for like 45 minutes. I don't, I don't know, mate. I don't know. This like, is the game. I can feel it. I can just sense it, you know? So the only games, the previous games only ended, right? Because Savage attacked Zane. Yeah, Savage was like trying to do an all-in, basically. So if Savage doesn't attack, he can't lose. Sound. Potentially. Sound. Genius. Potentially. Sound genius. That worries me. Because no attacking. So this is the same thing. It's like the two, the Blues Brothers gonna get in their Cadillac and they're gonna roll over <laughs> and just see like right is there are there any cops here what, and... do, do they, is it like punch it or something they say <laughs> punch they, it yeah like punch they're it they're on a mission from the Kala yeah from the we're Kala. on a mission from Tassadar or wh who's the god who's this, this the god in Protoss Lord I think it's the Kala is the thing the that finds like them. them yeah Tassadar is the it's like the he was like a boss. leader wasn't he yeah I'm Tassadar. not really good with the lore do you know the lore no. I, you know what? I mean, I love StarCraft 2, but the lore for it is not the Honestly, best. this game could be about, like, cowboys and Indian, robots yeah. and whatever, it's and I, it wouldn't cowboys. it wouldn't matter. Yeah, like, but if it, if all the skins were different and these were all just, like, circles and squares, I don't think I would care. Yeah, I know what you mean, because, like, the gameplay itself is so engaging, right? Yeah. And, like, the interaction between all the units. So, for the hyper-competitive high-level players like myself... <laughs> <laughs> the ultra serious yeah the no ultra jokes. serious yeah okay. we play on low graphics we're real gamers <laughs> zane booted up my pc to start playing and berates me to play ultra the first thing he said he dropped it to me like, what are you doing yeah we're well, it's funny my whole life i've had to play starcraft on low graphics settings because of like technological difficulties mm. i recently got a new laptop and i was able to play the game on ultra but like I just couldn't because it was like there was too much for my eyes to process. To be fair, you know I mean? it does. It's pretty busy. Like the screen is hard to like pick up. You know? Yeah, like it's like, like micro. And, like it's just even like pick off banings and like the big Ling Bane cluster kind of thing. But I turned it down to medium just so I can like finally play the game with like a little bit of graphics on it. It's nice, a little you know. Bit of graphics, yeah, yeah. Just enough. Yeah, I just nice. I just feel like I've earned it after all these years of playing with no graphics. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I'm, I'm allowed now to have a little bit of texture on my units, you know? They're not just, like, these, like, flat sheets, whatever. I think it's I think it's reasonable. It's reasonable. It's I, 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 the I mean, the autocrat approves, yeah? I'm still... I, I always play low, low, but because of this map pool, there's so many dark maps, I actually go to medium just because of the dark maps. Yeah. Because, I, actually, you can't see the dark maps on low. You, you can't, yeah, you have to turn the gamma up on low settings on some of the dark maps. Also, like, I, the, the biggest thing I've actually noticed about having a medium graphic setting is like you can see invisible units now. Like I can actually see the observer blur. Do you know what I mean? Whereas on low yeah. graphics settings, like I'm, I'm guaranteed you actually, it's not physically like in the game. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they just not, well, maybe not on a maybe not on a tiny monitor. Yeah. That's what I mean. On like yeah. a tiny monitor on low graphics settings, I'm like convinced that like they are completely like invisible. You know? 
like whatever that slider is for their like opacity op opacity op opacity yeah that's it that's yeah, right yeah good I said it right good word yeah is he almost pretty face why are the probes rallied to his army uh because this happens to really high level players like myself a lot <laughs> Where you are spamming buttons and you accidentally group probes in with your army when you can make I don't your control group. They're just following one of the void rays. Yeah, so it's just, yeah, there'll just be a misclick. Just right? a bad rally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the worst is when you rally them. I always rally when I'm fighting. I rally my all my nexuses, nexi across oh, yeah. the map, and then all of a sudden you see probes just charging their way through the middle. I'm like, you magnificent bastard! I do that as well all the time. This is the bane, right? massive attack. The bane is gonna go right for that shield battery. And take quite a few. Quite a few. I just, I just shoot up. Lovely force fields there for you yeah. to keep the probes alive. That would be massive if and, you managed to kill that middle line. And the thing is, the majority of those probes actually live. And they're already transferred. They're already yeah. working again. And this was just a fourth base. So Zane is chilling. That was just like, I'm gonna, I need to get rid of some gas. I'm savage. I'm going to go, you know, move command my banelings in, basically. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Didn't really achieve much. I think there. Savage is probably used to that winning the game. To be honest, like if that was me, the game would be over. I would yeah. have just lost everything there for free and gone, wow, Zerg is ridiculous. You would have got all the probes, then you would have followed up, probably yep. got the third base as well. And, and then so. I would watch the replay and I'd be like, Zane, how would I win this game? This is such bullshit. And he'd be like, well, you have four centuries with full, full energy. energy. <laughs> full energy. They didn't do that anything. Can, you, have a, you have a map editor, right, in front of you. Like, what are you doing? All right, so again, this is going to be a tricky way to not lose probes. Well, I think he's just going to lose probes here, yeah. So I think Zane gets punished here for a lack of map vision. I, I, I hate to criticize, but he should have had some map vision out here. Uh, to spot for those. But at the end of the day, he's still got a good amount of workers. This is enough. I think you're in the safety zone where you've got enough as a Protoss with four bases to keep making a scary Protoss army. Having less probes means you're just not going to be able to remax as many times. Yeah, but I don't think that's Zane's strategy. I don't think he's here for the remax, is he? I think he's here for the scary, like, big ball of death. Yeah. And then win the game off the back of that kind of thing. So, in fact, maybe even having a few less workers might help him. I think he might just squeeze out like an extra void ray or something like I that. I think what hurts here, though, is that he doesn't really have the minerals to like rebuild these cannons mm -hmm. and stuff. So, this is just going to be a vulnerable spot for him. And Savage can just throw waves of units at these bases. He's got, he's got a bit of an economic lead. And Kara's going to die real quick here. Yeah, this is not feeling great. One carrier does go down instantly, but Ooh, a big storm going go down. down. Yeah, that's a really big storm. A couple more like that, and we'll be in really good shape. There's so many probes still. A little bit of hesitation there from Savage means. Yo, there we go. But yeah, he does end up getting in the And that kill the Nexus? Maybe? Yeah, this one. Call me maybe? Actually looking like it might go down. Savage is looking like he's controlling the game, actually. I gotta tell you. Another Baneling run by at the fourth base of Zane. He is pulling everything out, but a nice little split on the Banelings means that once again everything going down and Do Zane know, is just gonna go fucking kill him well he has to at this point right he's lost so many workers that he has no other choice but to try and fight here and win the game yeah I actually Ooh, think that he yeah. might do some really good damage here because the Hydras don't trade that well against carriers especially with the Void Race of I was just gonna say the one I, I agree with you I think Savage has been in complete control of this game and played really really well the one thing he needed was Infestors for the microphone the shroud whatever because then this would have done no damage whatsoever because he could have just sit there with the uh, well I, I would agree with you other than the storms nah and you can't even tell like they're, oh, the storms they're so good nah. right and that's that's a 3-0 for Zane so he is keeping up the traditione the sweep sweep invitational the sweep invitational continues on now he's gonna waltz down the stairs yeah, I, can all hear, cocky. I can hear him coming oh. down the stairs i can hear the swagger i can hear, the can swagger? Hear, swagger? Oh I can hear it. he's got a big smile oh. on his face somebody take okay. this guy down a peg yeah. my god okay well, wasn't that the well best played series. well played which mean it wasn't the best <laughs> series <laughs> No, I, I have some technical issues game. still. I have some technical issues still. Technical issues. You were yeah. having technical issues. Yeah. Don't don't tell Savage that. Say like, oh no. man, everything worked perfectly. Are you pushing me? No, it was an honor to play against Savage. He's one of the all-time greats of the UK scene. Yeah. For sure. One of the oldest of the UK Absolutely. scene. Absolutely. Yeah. He's an old. He's yeah. a. Yeah. He's one of our most senior players. Yeah. The definitely. most senior in this tournament, I believe. And we so. only got him at the last minute. Like we got him last yeah, night. I yeah. signed him. I signed his contract last night. I had to <laughs> really sweeten the deal. Like yeah, it was. You had to hand deliver it. This it could be his last tournament. I, I hope not. I hope not, but I it could not. be. We, it could we've be. seen we've seen some magnificent plays out of him, and now oh. he's now he's in the lower bracket, and he's going to play against Chelch. Um, now we do have now. So that was actually our second round. I was calling it the semis. So that oh, actually should have th those should have been 
actually best of threes. Yeah, that's what I said to you. I said. <laughs> I like, thought they were the semis. Okay, so either way, you, we, we got an extra game out of it, top, and it was a 3-0. Yeah. Top production. We yeah. have some... <laughs> a, <laughs> lot, <laughs> a lot of power in here. Now, we need to... We're going to take a little break just to work out what we're going to cast next, and, yep. uh, and then we will be back with some more StarCraft action from the UK in not a very long amount of time, so yep. don't go anywhere. <laughs> 